I want to bring in Wang Lin for more on China's Belt and Road Initiative. She's a fellow at the China Business News Research Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. So with all the modes of modern transport, why does it seem that the railways are the backbone of most of the projects today? Yes, uh, thank you. When we're looking uh, of the railroads under the BRI uh, Belt and Road Initiative, we should look at that the uh, comparative comparative advantages of the railroads compared with the other transportation means on the road. Actually, railroads has three uh, comparative, uh, comparative advantages. One is efficiency, the second one is stability, and the third one is security. As the previous story has mentioned, many Chinese cities, either in the eastern coastal areas like Yiwu or in the western inland cities like Chongqing and Chengdu, or some cities in Xinjiang, now, with the real roads and also the real uh, renovated uh, real routes, they are connected to the world, to the market. So China is spending billions and billions of dollars to build and upgrade railroads inside the country to boost growth. Explain the bigger picture here. What's the goal? Yeah, uh, actually, when we're looking at the China's goal for the real road, uh, for the infrastructure, of the BRI or all the world, uh, we can see there are two different uh, types. One type is, as we mentioned before, that is the trade connectivity, that is to activate the existing uh, transportation routes, uh, the existing real routes, like from the Asia, from the Chinese cities to the European countries. And the second one is that China is also constructing many new railways uh, in some very uh, developed uh, in some very developed, some very least developed countries, like in Africa, in Kenya, in Ethiopia, or in Nigeria, many other countries, or maybe in the future in Pakistan. So that being said, you mentioned the investment, uh, not just directly connecting China to the West, but Africa, for example, even South America. What are the advantages by working on infrastructure in other countries? Yeah, uh, in terms of China's in, uh, advantages, based on my research on China's engagement in the overseas uh, infrastructure investment, I found three strong leverages of Chinese, co Chinese companies that is, they are enjoying. The first one is financing. We know that many of the railway construction uh, in the overseas host countries constructed by China but also financed by China by the China's development, China Development Bank, Acting Bank, and other financing arrangements. China now is having the financing to support the railways. And this is also the bottleneck of why those uh, develop, developing countries, like African countries, they won't have railways, but they don't have it because of the lack of the money. And the second leverage China is enjoying is the uh, experience and also the expertise, because China has developed the almost uh, the most developed and also the largest scale uh, domestic railway in China, including the uh, normal railway and also the high-speed rail train. So China has accumulated almost the most advanced technology, facilities, and also the manage management experience. The third one is that the uh, attractiveness of the um, access to Chinese market. As we have seen in the story that the Spanish companies, uh, the European companies, they are also using uh, the railway routes to transport and export their goods to the Chinese market. These African countries, European countries, why they want to have the Chinese companies to build the railroad, they also want to have the Chinese engagement to uh, act as a, like a um, gateway to the Chinese market. Because with Chinese engagement, there will be more possibility that to include the host countries or the host countries' railways connected and integrated to the Chinese um, market. And they can also export uh, to Chinese market. Like EU, EU is nowadays is not only exporting Chinese goods to the uh, foreign countries. EU now is also a destination of the foreign goods to uh, sell to the Chinese uh, customers. EU has also become a harbor of the transnational e-commerce center now. All right, Wang Lin in Beijing, thank you so much for joining us.